Hi, welcome to Friday with Friends. My name is Margaret Kosick. I'm a senior attorney with Coast to Coast Legal Aid. I had a guest lined up today, but it's busy in the healthcare industry, so unfortunately he couldn't make it. Um, just to give you a little introduction about me, um, I work in both the senior unit, which assists individuals 60 and over, and the Economic Advocacy and Community Health Unit, otherwise known as EACH, which focuses on public benefits. My primary work involves helping clients to gain access to healthcare. Um, I wanted to give you some updates regarding um, healthcare in the coronavirus pandemic. Um, but first, I wanted to give a quick overview about what I mean when I'm talking about gaining access to healthcare. So there are many different types of health coverage and it can get pretty complicated. Um, there's private health insurance, there's job-based coverage, there's Medicaid, Medicare, and since the Affordable Care Act was established, um, there's the health insurance marketplace. And for anyone who's uninsured, there are safety net options provided by nonprofit hospitals and federally qualified health centers. So people often get Medicare and Medicaid mixed up. Medicare is for seniors 65 and over and some disabled individuals regardless of income. You may be familiar with the different parts of Medicare. Uh, part A is hospital insurance. Part, um, part A is generally premium free for most people because they spend their working years paying into Medicare. Part B is medical insurance. Um, you generally pay a monthly premium for Part B. Um, part C is uh, the, a Medicare Advantage plan, which is like private insurance that provides both hospital and Medicare medical coverage in a single plan. Part D refers to prescription drug coverage that you can add to your basic Part A and Part B benefits. Um, so, Medicare covers about 80% of the costs. So generally beneficiaries are required to pay 20% coinsurance. Um, for anyone who doesn't get free premium part A, um, you, you may have to pay a premium of about $458 a month. Um, the standard part B premium is currently $144.60. So Medicaid is strictly for low income individuals. Um, under the Affordable Care Act, Medicaid was supposed to be expanded for anyone with low income, but the US Supreme Court said that states got to choose whether to expand. Um, so, so far the Florida legislature has chosen not to. So in Florida, you need to fit into a certain category so you need to be um, blind, elderly, disabled, um, pregnant, a child, or a parent caretaker in order to qualify for Medicaid. There are also different income limits depending on category. So it's more difficult, difficult to qualify as a parent caretaker, for example, than a, as a child because the income limit is much, much lower. So um, this gives just an overview of the, the coverage gap. So if you're not eligible for Medicaid, but your income is too low for health insurance marketplace subsidies, then you are in what is called the coverage gap. There are other types of Medicaid um, that, that don't provide full coverage, but they do provide some of the costs. Um, medically needy is for anyone who fits into a Medicaid category, but whose income is too high for Medicaid. It will cover uh, medical costs above what is called a share of cost, which acts somewhat like an insurance deductible. There's also Medicare savings programs, which despite the name is a type of Medicaid that pays the Medicare premiums, the co-payments or both. And then there is um, there are two different types of Medicaid that cover long-term care. One is in institutional care program Medicaid. Uh, sorry, I forgot the word program there. Um, and then there's long-term care Medicaid. Um, the institutional care Medicaid provides nursing home coverage and long-term care provides 
home uh, services in the home and community uh, for those who need a nursing level of care. So I briefly mentioned the health insurance marketplace before. Um, it's for anyone with moderate income. So for example, an individual with income between approximately uh, 12,760 and 51,040 um, will be eligible to purchase low cost um, affordable coverage in the marketplace. Uh, you may know the marketplace as Obamacare. It's a great option for anyone who recently lost their job-based coverage due to the coronavirus. Um, open enrollment for the marketplace is November 1st to December 15th for 21, uh, 2021 coverage. However, if you had a major change such as loss of coverage, you may be eligible for a special enrollment period within 60 days of that change. So for anyone who doesn't fit into the categorical or financial requirements of Medicaid, but whose income is too low for subsidies in the marketplace, nonprofit hospitals such as Broward Health in North Broward and Memorial in South Broward may be able to provide financial assistance through charity care programs. These programs provide reduced cost primary care services to low-income residents of Broward. So if you're eligible, you don't have to pay any premiums and you only have to pay small co-pays. You can also be referred to specialists, get any medically necessary procedures and have emergency care covered all for just a few dollars. Um, the assessments in the past were done in person, but now they're doing them remotely as well. Um, also, I want to mention there is free testing for coronavirus in Broward County. Um, there's a free walk-up testing site in Lincoln Park in Fort Lauderdale. Um, Broward Health is also offering free drive-through testing in Regional Park in Lauder Hill um, and CB Smith Park. Uh, the numbers are there on the screen. Um, so you can call, for example, 95, if you want a walk-up appointment, call 954-412-7300. If you want to do one of the drive-through, call 954-320-5730 or 954-276-4680. So the, um, before we go, I wanted to mention some other changes that affect health coverage due to the coronavirus. Some people may already be aware that the Social Security Administration and Department of Children and Families offices are closed. However, they are still working remotely, just as we are. And much of the work that's required, um, that has required an office visit in the past may be able to be done over the phone, by computer, or by fax or mail. The two main changes to the health law um, have are the Families First Coronavirus Response Act and the CARES Act. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me, through those laws, private insurers, Medicare and Medicaid are required to cover coronavirus testing. These laws are also um, allowed states flexibility to their Medicaid programs. So Medicaid terminations have been suspended during the coronavirus emergency period. Um, also, there were changes to Medicaid appeals process that are good for beneficiaries. So for example, the deadline for appeal has been extended. And the Medicaid managed care uh, plans appeal process is considered to be exhausted immediately. So beneficiaries can request a hearing right away without waiting for a uh, 30 days for decision from the plan. Also, many of the HIPAA health privacy restrictions have been waived, so patients can more easily see their doctors through uh, using tele telehealth. So thank you so much for joining. Um, if you are uncertain of what type of coverage you qualify for, or if you've been improperly denied services or coverage, you can contact us. 
Um, if you're 60 or over, please call 954-736-2496. Or if you're under 60, um, call 954-736-2490. Um, again, thank you for joining Friday with Friends. Um, we have it every week. I hope you'll come back next Friday for another edition. Um, also, I want to mention that uh, Tuesday, August 11th at 5 o'clock, we have a virtual immigration clinic. I hope you'll join us for that too. Thank you so much.